All right, what's going on guys? Ben Glean here coming back at you with another video. And today we have a mock draft, or I say we, obviously me. I've done my first mock draft for you guys and I've decided to put it into Madden just so we can show, you know, the players with where their team could potentially be. And before we start, this is all speculative, obviously. That's the way mock drafts are. And I don't even personally agree with this myself. <laughs> like, so many of these picks just don't seem like realistic to me like it's so difficult to purposely um or go out there and screw up each team's draft pick <laughs> but you know some of these picks just won't happen a majority will not it's so early as i record this it is november um and keep in mind that the records will change over the season so the draft order also will vary from week to week but this is my like way too early mock draft right now where I think these players could, could end up based on impending free agents, weak positions on each team, as well as um, weak positions on each team where I think could potentially be addressed in the draft, whether it's due to age or not playing well, any of those things. So you guys get it. It's all you know subject, uh, subjective. It's all speculative. Many of these will not happen. It's just my guess of where things could happen if the draft was today. Let's get into it. So, as the draft order stands right now, and again, this is subject to change, even maybe when this video comes out, but with the first pick on the clock, the Cleveland Browns select Sam Darnold, quarterback, USC. Now, there's a ton of speculation on whether Sam Darnold will even come out or not. Many players in this draft and in this mock draft, it's only speculation on whether they will come out or not. This is of draft eligible players only, of course. And Sam Darnold just has so many upsides to him in terms of what makes up some of the greatest quarterbacks ever with arm talent, uh, accuracy. He's just got the the build for what you'd look like or what you'd look for in a quarterback. Now he hasn't been as consistent for USC this year, and granted, he has lost a lot of his top targets. And the team around him is much worse. He has thrown a good amount of interceptions, and his numbers are not as good as where, you know, he definitely wants them to be, or as good as where you know NFL scouts would want them to be. However, based on his upsides and based on the Browns, you know, not taking a number of quarterbacks that have started to perform well in the past, I think the Browns take their quarterback of the future. They're going to say it's Sam Darnold. We'll see how he performs. But yeah, Sam Darnold to the Browns with the number one overall pick. With the number two overall pick, the San Francisco 49ers currently hold that selection. And in this 2018 NFL mock draft, the San Francisco 49ers select Saquon Barkley, running back, Penn State. Saquon Barkley has played so well for the Nittany Lions over this past year. He showcased that he's a tremendous runner. He's currently my highest graded prospect in the draft. Uh, I still have a, a lot more scouting to do, but currently Saquon Barkley is is my number one overall player in the draft i think this could be one of the first running backs to go really high um in the past decade of course like easy k elliott was trent richardson was but you know that trend of not taking running backs in the first round uh could be going away and with guys as talented as saquon barkley they could be making a move back i know like you know easy k elliott was top five pick and there are a number of, uh, of other players who have gone high leonard fournette also being one but I think it's fully back and forth with Saquon Barkley to the Niners at number two. It makes a lot of sense. Not that Matt Breida hasn't played well. Not that Carlos Hyde hasn't necessarily played well. They're not star running backs, uh, especially with Carlos Hyde being an impending free agent. It makes all too much sense for the 49ers to grab the top player available at a potential position of need for them. So I have Saquon Barkley to the San Francisco 49ers with the number two overall pick. With the number three overall pick, you currently have my favorite team, the New York Giants. And those New York Giants will select with the third pick. Trey Adams, a tackle out of Washington. Now, I think this might be a little early for Adams to go. I really don't necessarily agree with my own uh, projection here. However, Trey Adams is a very good player. There are a number of really good tackles in this draft. I think he could be the first one to go. The Giants are just so in need of offensive line. I think they would potentially reach at a position of need if they don't end up trading down. I think Trey Adams would be a pretty good fit. The Giants have shown uh, that they do like to draft tackles 
with long hair, not that that would matter, but Adam Biznawadi and then Chad Wheeler out of Pitt and then USC, respectively. However, Trey Adams out of Washington, he's a good player. I think definitely going to be a first-round pick. Is three a little high? I would say absolutely. However, I could see it happening. Um, it depends who's available when the Giants pick. They're just they're needy at a number of positions. Linebacker, I think. Defensive end, I think. Potentially safety, as well as potentially wide receiver, offensive line, running back, and maybe even quarterback. I know I keep saying potentially, and I do apologize for that, but the Giants have a number of different directions in which they could go. I think Trey Adams could be the look for them at number three help out on that offensive line. Eric Flowers is abysmal. John Jerry's terrible. There are so many players in the Giants that suck so badly. Maybe Trey Adams is a start to helping them out, getting some protection for whoever their quarterback may end up being. And now the Bucks are on the clock with the number four overall pick. A lot of people, just like the Giants, thought that the Bucks would be a lot better this year, and they really have not performed. They do have a number of issues um, and a number of positions of need. But with this pick, with the number four overall pick, I have the Bucks taking Derwin James, a safety out of Florida State, a very, very hyped up prospect out of Florida State. He has not been utilized to his full abilities um, as far as, uh, in my opinion, goes. Uh, I mean, I am so poorly spoken in this video thus far. However, Derwin James, I think, is an extremely talented player, and the Bucks are needy at safety. It isn't their biggest position of need necessarily, as you would definitely address, or should we address the defensive line, number of issues on that defensive line. However, I think with Keith Tandy as their current starting free safety, uh, they could upgrade at the position. I think Derwin James could play either free safety, but most likely he will play strong safety. I think the Bucks take themselves a playmaker, someone that could really help them out in the future. I think Derwin James is a tremendous player, despite what most of Twitter thinks. Twitter hates Derwin James. Uh, I'm not sure why. He has a ton of upside. He's being utilized poorly, I think. In the right system, Derwin James is not only going to be an animal, but a playmaker and a difference maker for any team that drops him. In this case, I have him going to the Bucks at number four. On the clock at number five are the Indianapolis Colts, and they've played extremely poorly this year. One of the worst teams in the NFL. That's why they have a top five pick, obviously. However, Andrew Luck, when he's been healthy, which I understand has not really been at all, Andrew Luck is a top five quarterback in the NFL. I think a few will disagree with that, but I think it's generally agreed upon, and it, in my opinion, is just a straight fact. I know opinion fact, kind of a weird wishy-washy thing there. Andrew Luck is a top five quarterback in the NFL. He hasn't had the targets. He, has, he hasn't had the protection. In recent years, they've gone after offensive lineman Ryan Kelly to play center. He's been pretty solid in the NFL so far, had a very good rookie campaign. However, he has been devoid of weapons. I know they have T.Y. Hilton, and he's made Jack Doyle look very good. Uh, and Jack Doyle is a pretty good player. However, you need more weapons for Andrew Luck. I could see them going receiver. So at number five, I have the Indianapolis Colts selecting Calvin Ridley, a wide receiver out of Alabama. He is a very talented player, one of the top two or three wide receivers in the draft. It depends on what you need. I think that this type of a player, one that I think is similar to Amari Cooper in a lot of abilities, uh, could be very valuable, and that's why I have him going to the Indianapolis Colts at number five. At the number six pick, you have the Cincinnati Bengals, and the Bengals are an interesting team because they could potentially be in the market for a quarterback, although I don't think that they will be. I think they're perfectly content with Andy Dalton right now, and I think their bigger issues, um, well, I mean, their offense is poor. I think they need to fire Marvin Lewis more than likely, but I think their bigger issues are on the defensive side of the ball, and that's why I have them selecting Minka Fitzpatrick at number six. He's a free safety who could also play cornerback. He played a lot of cornerback at Alabama and has more recently been moved to that safety position where he's played extremely well. I think Minka Fitzpatrick could easily be a top 10 pick. And you look at the current safety situation with the Bengals, he would probably be uh, replacing George Iloka, who just hasn't really been all that good for the Bengals in the past couple of years. He could potentially play cornerback as well. You have Drake Kirkpatrick in there. It's pretty much with the Bengals, we like to draft cornerbacks who aren't all that good. You know, Drake Kirkpatrick, Darquez Denard. They do have Adam Jones that have played well. They drafted William Jackson. I'm a huge fan of William Jackson. I think he's a tremendous player. Maybe you get Minka Fitzpatrick and play him at cornerback, but I think more than likely he's going to play safety for the Bengals if they were to draft him, which I have him in my mock draft, of course. Very good player. I think he would benefit... Um, being on the Bengals, help out their team, be a very good player for them. Let's move on to the number seven overall pick. Eight, seven? 
And now we have the Browns back on the clock. We had them taking a quarterback earlier, which I think is an interesting selection for them. I think it's going to be too much for them to pass on a quarterback, whether it's Josh Rosen who ends up going, uh, or Sam Darnold, or Josh Allen by some means, or even Lamar Jackson. They have a number of options. I think they do go quarterback with the number one overall pick unless they trade down, uh, which I think is probably unlikely. Regardless, they are back on the clock with the seventh selection. And with that pick, I believe that they will go Bradley Chubb, a defensive end out of NC State. He's played so well for the Wolfpack over this past season. He's been a dominant 4-3 defensive end. He's played so well. And I think with the Browns, they could use another pass rusher, someone that really fits their scheme. They took Miles Garrett in this past draft. He's played extremely well when he's been on the field. Why not put another huge weapon on the other side to create a monstrous defensive line? You do have Emmanuel Agba kind of as that pass rushing outside linebacker type player that does play defensive end. I think he could be more of a situational guy. I think you could maybe kick Bradley Chubb inside depending on what system you decide to play or what defense you come out in. Bradley Chubb could be an immense weapon for the Browns. Another step in their rebuilding process. Very good player. Uh, I think he'd be a dominant force on the other side of Miles Garrett. And now the Chargers find themselves on the clock at number eight. I think they picked seventh last year, if I'm not mistaken. Somewhere in that range. And um, it's very interesting. Uh, we're just going to get right into the pick. I have the Chargers selecting Josh Rosen, a quarterback out of UCLA. Debatably the number one overall quarterback in this draft class. I think you could easily make that argument very easily. And I think it made a lot of sense because the Chargers are a team that were certainly in the market for a quarterback last year and did not end up taking one. However, Josh Rosen out of UCLA could be an excellent understudy to Phillip Rivers for a year or two until Phillip Rivers eventually decides to hang up the cleats or parts ways with the Los Angeles Chargers. I think it makes a lot of sense. I think it's a cool storyline keeping Josh Rosen in the Los Angeles area. I think Josh Rosen to the Chargers makes a ton of sense as, you know, stated previously. And uh, yeah, Chargers are in the market for a quarterback, in my opinion. Have him learn under Phillip Rivers for a year, get accustomed to that system that they're running in Los Angeles. And uh, yeah, Josh Rosen to the Chargers at number eight. And now the Broncos are on the clock with the number nine overall pick. And with that ninth overall pick, I have the Broncos selecting Deron Payne, a defensive tackle out of Alabama, someone that can certainly play the nose. He is 6'2", 311 pounds, an absolute monster on the defensive line. He's been a dominant force at Alabama. Certainly, I believe, uh, one of the top defensive tackles available, if not the top defensive tackle available. I think that is probably the case. Deron Payne has been very good at Alabama. And with the Broncos, you do have a need at quarterback. However, I think they're going to opt to potentially pass on one, at least in the first round, at least with this selection. They could maybe trade up again in the draft, get another first round pick the way they did to grab Paxton Lynch a couple years back because they have not been playing him. I know he's been injured a little bit, but uh, I think it's very unlikely that Paxton Lynch even takes a snap for the Broncos, maybe ever, which is kind of an interesting statement, but I think it's a large possibility at this point. Deron Payne, very good player. Get him on your defensive line. You upgrade from Demata Pecco, who is very old. There's no one with real youth on that defensive line. I think Demata, excuse me, Deron Payne comes in there, uh, adds that youth, and is a dominant force on your defensive line. Someone to take the pressure off of Von Miller, off of Derek Wolf, off of Shaquille Barrett, off of a Shane Ray. You guys get the point. Um, Deron Payne, very good player. Could be exactly what that Broncos defensive line needs. And now the Bears have the last pick in the top 10. That is, of course, the number 10 overall pick. And with that number 10 overall pick, I think they're going to take Cortland Sutton, a wide receiver out of SMU. Depending on what you value uh, and where you went, rank the receivers, Cortland Sutton could be the number one overall receiver available. However, of course, remember Calvin Ridley was mocked to the Colts at number five. Cortland Sutton is a gigantic receiver with tremendous athleticism, 6'4", about 220. Uh, he'll probably run somewhere in the 4'5 range, so he does have some good speed to him. He's a jump ball receiver with good route running, so Cortland Sutton could be exactly what the Bears need for Mitchell to Brit, uh, Trubisky. They have pretty much no targets. Zach Miller may never play again at tight end. Cameron Meredith, Meredith has been injured. When he's back, he's a very good option. 
However, they need another receiver. With Alshon Jeffrey and Brandon Marshall, you had some of the best Bears play over the last decade, um, you know, regardless of them going to the Super Bowl. I keep saying decade. I'll just say that within the last five years. Cortland Sutton, Cam Meredith could be a really good duo of tall receivers, 6'3 and 6'4 respectively. Um, yeah, Cortland Sutton, very good player. I think the Bears and Mitch Debrit Trubisky could do very well uh, with bringing in another weapon. So let's move on to number 11. With the 11th pick, the Ravens are on the board. And with Jeremy Macklin being 29 and Mike Wallace being 31, I think a receiver could be a very possible pick for the Ravens. So that's why I have them taking, helping out the offense. This is Equinemius St. Brown, a receiver out of Notre Dame. He is a big frame. He is six foot five. He's someone that also has speed. He's a very polished route runner uh, and was Notre Dame's, I believe, 2016 Offensive Player of the Year. So, you know, Notre Dame's had some pretty good players over the past couple of years. Equinemius St. Brown has performed very well. However, he could not even end up being a first-round pick. I think the Ravens, who are needy for a huge target, someone that they can really um, benefit from would be Equinemius St. Brown. I think to take a receiver here, and uh, he is potentially one of the best available. Equinemius St. Brown, one of the most fun names ever there was to say. Right up there with Debricka Shaw Ferguson. Uh, Ravens show Equinemia St. Brown at number 11. With the 12th pick, the New York Jets are on the clock. And I have the New York Jets selecting Lamar Jackson, quarterback out of Louisville. A playmaking quarterback obviously can make plays with his legs as well as his arm. I think he needs to make a lot of changes if he's going to be a successful quarterback in terms of being less lazy. Uh, really work on mechanics and his accuracy has been a problem. His UNC tape is some of the worst tape I've ever seen. However, I do think he could still be a first round quarterback. I think he could easily be drafted in the first round, um, whether his talent is that of a first round quarterback or not. Very big playmaker. The Jets need a quarterback. Josh McCown clearly is not the answer, especially considering he's like 39 years old. He was coaching high school football a couple of years ago, but yeah. Lamar Jackson to the Jets with the number 12 overall, yeah, the number 12 overall pick, and uh, could be a playmaker for the Jets and bring them back to the playoffs, uh, where they made two AFC championships in back-to-back -back years. And now the Raiders are on the clock, and I have to say, their linebacking core being so deplorable is a secret to no one. With this pick, I have the Raiders selecting Roquan Smith, probably the top inside linebacker available in this draft out of Georgia. I'm a huge fan of Malik Jefferson personally, but there is, I would say, some bias there uh, as I am a gigantic Texas Longhorn fan. But yeah, I think Roquan Smith probably will be the first inside linebacker off the board. Very good player. Has played phenomenally at Georgia. Uh, and yeah, Raiders linebacking core is some of the worst in the NFL. It rivals the Giants, in fact, of how bad it is. So you know, inside linebacker help is a must. Roquan Smith could be that guy. And now the Cardinals are on the clock. We're just going to uh, jump straight into this. And with this pick, the Arizona Cardinals select Baker Mayfield, a quarterback out of Oklahoma. One of my favorite quarterbacks in this draft in terms of ability. I don't like Oklahoma, but you got to acknowledge just how talented Baker Mayfield is. Some of the best arm talent uh, I've seen over the last few years. Baker Mayfield could be a tremendous quarterback at the next level. Carson Palmer hasn't been exactly as bad as everyone else has said. However, he is up there in age. They could go with either an understudy to Carson Palmer as they were in the market for a quarterback last year and decided to take Hassan Reddick with that 13th overall pick. Baker Mayfield is a very good player. Could play a year or two under Carson Palmer, however long he stays tendered on that team. But Baker Mayfield would be a good selection whether he's coming in to start either way or not. Very good player out of Oklahoma. Could be a very good addition to that Cardinals team. And now the Dolphins are on the clock with the 15th pick in the 2018 NFL Draft. And in my mock draft, I have them selecting Arden Key, one of the most premier pass rushers in this draft. I believe it might be the first edge rusher that I actually have going. Okay, we have Bradley Chubb on here. But uh, Arden Key is one that could be a 3-4 outside linebacker or a 4-3 a pass rusher with tremendous speed and burst off the edge. Tr phenomenal athlete. 
he could very well fall to this point in the draft depending on you know other teams taking different positions however he is a tremendous player hasn't had the production this year but especially in last season he was fantastic i think he certainly has the skills the tools the athleticism to make it at the next level i don't think he's going to be a barkevious mingo where he has you know all the athleticism and then doesn't make it in the nfl i think arden key is a much better player in that premier pass rusher in this draft dolphins land themselves someone to play a part um, from charles harris cameron wake is like 35 or 36 they need another younger player he could be a situational pass rusher at first and then come in to start full time in a year or two very good player i think the dolphins land themselves a stud out of lsu and now the falcons are on the clock with the 16th 16th overall pick and i believe the falcons will select christian wilkins a defensive tackle out of clemson and now i know what you're thinking right off the bat it doesn't make a ton of sense for a team with two very good defensive tackles to go defensive tackle in the draft however with dontari poe i believe being an impending free agent as he only signed i think a one-year deal to go to the falcons uh, they need someone else to come in there he could very easily leave the falcons as they haven't really been a super bowl contender caliber team so far this year also a situational pass rusher especially at defensive tackle is never a bad option christian wilkins is a big boy 6 4 305 but he can move very very athletic good pass rusher is stout in stopping the run i think could be a tremendous player for any team in this case i have the falcons taking him at number 16 helping out the defensive line a little bit and now we have a very interesting team on the clock at 17 in the green bay packers who i'm sure if they could at this position in the draft would draft a new head coach Someone who's a lot better than Mike McCarthy, who's been absolutely deplorable with play calling and a number of other things for the Packers so far this year. He needs to go. The Packers need to get themselves some more weapons, some more very good players that can help their team win. And with this pick, I have the Packers selecting Ken Webster, a cornerback out of Ole Miss. Probably a top two cornerback available. I, I say probably. He's, I think he's definitely a top two cornerback available, if not the best out of Ole Miss. He's 5'11", 196. He's really got a true cornerback build. They drafted Kevin King last year, who's a very, very big player. And I think Demarius Randall is better suited to play safety. They tried to make the transition with him to cornerback as they had with a bunch of other players I think would be more suited to play safety. In this pick, they get a true cornerback to help out that defensive backfield. Ken Webster could be a very, very good player and uh, help out that cornerback group. And now the Lions are on the clock with the 18th pick in the draft. And I have the Lions selecting Cleland Farrell, a defensive end out of Clemson, one of my favorite pass rushers in the draft. Edge rushers are my favorite position uh, to go over. And you have a number of good ones in this draft class. Specifically, in my opinion, Arden Key, Cleland Farrell, and Dorrance Armstrong Jr., Cleveland Farrell is someone that I think could be a top five draft pick if he stayed at Clemson for another year and went into the draft next year. However, he is draft eligible. I have him declaring for the draft and going to the Lions who could very much use a defensive end. They could use a pass rusher. Cleveland Farrell is someone that's stout in the run game, stopping that as well, but also is someone that can get to the quarterback. Maybe he's a product of that sick Clemson defensive line, but I've watched him extensively and I really think this is a can't miss prospect. Cleveland Farrell is a very, very good player, and Detroit would benefit greatly from adding him to their team. And now with this pick, we have the Washington Redskins on the board. We're just going to jump right in. I have the Redskins selecting Paris Campbell, a receiver out of the Ohio State University. Paris Campbell is a very good player, and you'd think with the Redskins, like maybe wide receiver isn't their biggest concern, isn't their biggest area of need, but I think it is one that they can certainly address here in the first round. You do have Josh Doxson, I think is a very good player, would complement Paris Campbell extremely well. However, Jamison Crowder, another slot guy, those are two quality receivers. Terrell Pryor has shown that he can't be a very good receiver in this league, at least not with Washington. And there's really not another guy there. Maybe Ryan Grant, but I don't think he's the guy. Paris Campbell is a good player. I think he's another type of guy that can be on the outside. He is six foot one, about 210. He has the size to play on the outside. He has, you know, the abilities to be like an Amari Cooper type player, be like we talked about earlier, a Calvin Ridley type player. Does he necessarily have all the build, the abilities and could he be as good? Maybe not, but he is a good player nonetheless, someone that I think could easily get drafted in the first round. I think the Redskins take him here about middle of the way through. 
And now the Seahawks are on the clock coming up to that 20th pick. They believe this is number 19. And I think the Seahawks are going to take an offensive lineman. And that offensive lineman happens to be Mike McGlinchey, an offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. I think he could be easily the number one overall tackle in this draft class. And I do have a tackle going at number three to the Giants and then not another one going until 20. I think there are some teams in the middle that could be in the market for an offensive lineman, especially a tackle. I think the Atlanta Falcons might be one of those. They could also upgrade at guard. But we have the Seahawks taking a very good player here, upgrading on that abysmal offensive line. Reese Odiambo has been terrible. Jermaine Ifedi, the former first over, excuse me, first overall pick for the Seahawks, first round pick, has been pretty bad as well. They could benefit from taking a very good offensive tackle. One of the best available, and that is Mike McGlinchey, the current best available at this spot. Very good offensive lineman out of Notre Dame here to the Seahawks at number 20. Or 19? I, I, I can't count. And now the Titans are on the clock with the 21st overall pick in the draft. And I have them taking Dorrance Armstrong Jr., a defensive end slash outside linebacker. He'd work perfectly as a 3-4 outside linebacker in a lot of schemes. He's a very talented player. One of my favorite uh, players in this draft ability-wise. Tremendously fun to watch. Another amazing athlete. He went to a smaller time school, even though it is still is in the Big 12. Kansas has been absolutely atrocious. Dorrance Armstrong has been the one watchable piece of that defense, of that team really, and of that defensive line. Very good player. You see the Titans have a need as an outside pass rusher. Derek Morgan's kind of been a hybrid guy. Brian Arakpa's been, been very good. But those are guys who are on the wrong side of 30. I think Derek Morgan is 30 or 31. I know Brian Arakpo is beyond um, 30 years old. They could use a younger pass rusher, certainly someone situationally. Dorrance Armstrong Jr. could very well be that guy. I know they drafted Kevin Dodd, who has not been healthy, but you could never hurt from adding another pass rusher, especially one as talented as Dorrance Armstrong Jr. I think Titans land themselves a stud here at pick number 21. And now we have the Dallas Cowboys on the clock at 22. They're a pretty good team, especially on offense. They could use a playmaking wide receiver. However, with this pick, I have the Cowboys going Sam Hubbard, a defensive end out of Ohio State. Not only is Demarcus Lawrence a free agent, he could very well not re-sign with the Cowboys in this offseason. They do need a pass rusher on the other side. Sam Hubbard is a pure 4-3 defensive end, in my opinion. Um, very good athlete, I think, for his size. And um, very good 4-3 player. Good pass rush moves. Another guy that's pretty good in stuffing the run as well also coming out of the Ohio State University. Could be a good player for those Dallas Cowboys. And let's move on to the next pick, which is the Buffalo Bills, one of their two. And now we have the Buffalo Bills on the board, Bills Mafia. And I have the Buffalo Bills taking Denzel Ward, another player out of the Ohio State University. Probably bothering some people that I'm doing that. I'm not really sure why I am. It doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. I think Tredavious White has played exceptionally so far for the Bills. I think he's best suited as a slot corner. I think he could be the best slot corner in the NFL with the way that he's been playing. I think he naturally fits in the slot. EJ Gaines has been playing very, very well for the Buffalo Bills. So you say, oh, two good corners. They definitely don't really need a third, especially not one of the first round. That would be a misconception if you are having that belief. Denzel Ward would play on the outside. Tredavious White would go in the slot. The Bills would be able to utilize a nickel package almost every time. That's pretty much their base package anyway. Denzel Ward, very good player out of Ohio State. One of the top cornerbacks available. And uh, I think he would help out the Buffalo Bills defense quite a bit. Really make this team more of a front runner in the AFC East to rival the Patriots. Who knows? It could happen very easily. We've seen this year it has. And now with this pick, we have the Carolina Panthers on the clock. And I have the Panthers selecting. Austin Bryant, a defensive end out of Clemson. Another one of those really good Clemson defensive line we talked about. Cleveland Farrell um, being one of them. The other being Christian Wilkins. They have a very sick defensive line. Three of them could come out into the draft this year. Austin Bryant, real 4-3 guy. I would never play him at defensive end in the 3-4. Although I believe that you could kick him inside potentially to play defensive tackle in a 4-3. Although I probably wouldn't advise it. He's been a very good defensive end for Clemson. Another guy that stops the run. Another guy that can get after the quarterback. 
good defensive lineman. They took Vernon Butler either a year or two ago. He hasn't been much at defensive tackle, but with guys getting up there in age, Mario Addison, of course, Charles Johnson, Julius Peppers, you need a fresh face to rush the passer and get after the quarterback. The likes that they have not seen since a Greg Hardy, but that's enough about the Kraken. He hasn't really come up in a while, but yeah, Austin Bryant could be a very good player for the Panthers. They play him correctly, see big things happening. They need an upgrade on that defensive line. Austin Bryant is that guy. And now the Jaguars are on the clock. A very interesting team that seemingly come out of nowhere. Although, here's the thing. They haven't. They've been building up their team through the draft. And then they've been going out and signing the top free agents available. You saw them bring in Barry Church. I don't know why I started with him. But Calais Campbell has been dominant. You have guys that they've drafted. Uh, Miles Jack, Yannick Ngakwe, Dante Fowler Jr. is even playing very, very well. Dante Fowler Jr. You can't mention uh, the Jaguars anymore without A.J. Boye, who they signed, who's been one of the top cornerbacks in the league over the past two seasons. They have a very good team. The one thing that's missing, I got to say, it's, Bla it's Blake Bortles. He's the problem. They, they're missing a quarterback. So with this pick, I have the Jaguars taking that quarterback, and that is Josh Allen, quarterback out, out of Wyoming, could have been a top five pick going into this season, has been a little bit underwhelming at Wyoming. However, I think he still has a ton of talent, and at this juncture in the draft, it wouldn't be too much of a reach to go after a guy like Josh Allen that can play at a very high level, has a ton of potential. If he lives up to that potential, this would be a, you know, a swing and a ball hit out of the park for the Jaguars. Josh Allen could be a very good quarterback. One of two Josh Allens in this draft that I know of. So yeah, Jaguars land themselves a quarterback late in the first round. And now we have the Buffalo Bills back on the clock. Here's what we have them doing. I have them selecting Trenton Thompson, a defensive tackle out of Georgia. He's proven to be a very good player. He did, I believe, tear his ACL at, uh, at some point. But he's come back. He's looked very good. I uh, believe that he can obviously come back from the injury and play very well as I have him going here in the first round. With the Bills trading Marcel Darius and a guy like Kyle Williams being, I think, 33 or 34 years old at this point. Kyle Williams has been very good for a very long time. They need to upgrade on that defensive line in that defensive interior. I think with them trading Marcel Darius, they've shown that they're going to take a defensive tackle in this draft. They have two picks. It's not like they're going to miss out on one of them. I think they have a few in mind that they like. Trenton Thompson could be that guy for the Buffalo Bills. I think they're taking a defensive lineman in the first round, no matter what. Probably a defensive tackle. Trenton Thompson could be that guy. And now at pick number 27, the Rams are on the clock. I know it says St. Louis. Obviously, they're in Los Angeles now, but... I have the Rams selecting Tarvaris McFadden, a cornerback out of Florida State, another very big cornerback. They've shown that they don't mind drafting bigger corners with the selection of Tremaine Johnson, who, now that I brought him up, is an impending free agent. He was hit with the franchise tag this past year and is now having a career year. So he is not going to be cheap to bring back if the Rams manage to do so at all. So I think a cornerback could be a very simple solution for them in the draft. Easy pick, as well as them trading away EJ Gaines. They need a cornerback, whether they keep Tremaine Johnson or not. Tavares McFadden could be that guy. Very good cornerback, huge frame, could be a dominant force of gigantic cornerbacks in Los Angeles. Um, even with the Chargers too, although they're not as big, but Casey Hayward, um, Trevor Williams, and Jason Verrett. That's a good group of cornerbacks with the Chargers. Why not do the same in Los Angeles with Tremaine Johnson, Tavares McFadden? Why not? And now the Vikings are on the board at number 28. And I have the Vikings selecting Malik Jefferson. Inside, potentially outside linebacker out of the University of Texas. Hook him horns. I do love myself some Texas. I don't even know if you guys saw that. doesn't matter. Um... Very, very good player. Did not necessarily live up to his potential during his sophomore campaign. Um, but this year as a junior, he has been dominant. I'm talking about probably the top inside linebacker in the nation. I know I talked about Roquan Smith earlier. But apparently there are concerns about whether Malik Jackson actually loves football or not. 
so that could hurt his draft stock that's why i have him falling here that's why i have him being the second linebacker selected second inside linebacker although again he could play on the outside depending on the scheme very very good player a uh, huge fan of malik jefferson obviously there is bias here but that doesn't take anything away from his abilities he is a very 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 talented player and the vikings would land themselves a stud here at number 28 and now the pittsburgh steelers are on the board and i have the pittsburgh steelers selecting auden tate a receiver out of florida state that is kind of a rhymey fun thing to say however tate is a gigantic receiver six foot five 227 with speed with route running ability but he's going to be your jump ball receiver um we'll go back to right antonio brown one of the best receivers in the nfl debatably the best and he's five foot ten five foot eleven you had martavis bryant as your big option but he doesn't want to play for the steelers anymore and i'm not sure the steelers want him playing for them anymore juju smith schuster has been very good but you need another guy and someone that can be a huge red zone threat a vertical receiver six foot five throw the ball up to him let him make a play auden tate out of florida state could be the pick here and it would be great and now the saints are on the board the saints have played so well over uh this season with the emergence of guys like ken crawley marshawn Lattimore. they've had very good safety play with marcus williams and you look at von bell and kenny vaccaro both taking steps uh, on the defensive line, Cam Jordan has played very well. Of course, you look at Sheldon Rankins, who's a very good defensive tackle. And you're trying to find holes on this team. They have the receiving core for the most part with Willie Sneed and Michael Thomas. Drew Brees is their quarterback. They have a two-headed monster in Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. Their offensive line is decent, however not great. So with this pick for the New Orleans Saints, I have the Saints selecting the other Josh Allen outside linebacker out of kentucky he's a 4-3 outside linebacker would be a perfect fit for the saints here and i know they have craig robertson he's older manti teo is not the best guy for the saints they need another really good linebacker option stefan anthony clearly wasn't the guy um but josh allen at outside linebacker could be a difference maker someone that's a very good athlete someone that can wrap up someone with potential coverage as well as pass rushing abilities however they are not refined he could be a very good developmental player although he still has a lot of ability he could be even higher in this draft but i have the saints taking him here at the very end of the first round and now the patriots are on the clock with the second to last pick here in the first round and the patriots will select andrew brown a defensive tackle out of virginia one that's played very very well at virginia even though it is one of those smaller of the big schools uh for the cavaliers andrew brown has been very good he's another um tall defensive tackle we've seen some six four ones already go in this draft six four 285 a really really athletic player i think he'd be a tremendous guy next to malcolm brown on that defensive line they need to bolster that part of their team andrew brown could be the guy i originally had them taking darius geis but i'm like would they really take a running back where they could pretty much plug in anyone and have them play well probably not defensive line is a bigger area of need so i have andrew brown to the patriots with the 31st pick and rounding out our first mock draft of the year we have the philadelphia eagles the super bowl front runners at this point i believe they are seven or eight and one it could depend you know based on when i'm recording this video but i have the philadelphia eagles selecting orlando brown tackle out of oklahoma an absolute giant six foot eight 345 pounds he has protected sam darnold not sam darnold excuse me baker mayfield very well the entire year with jason peters tearing both his acl and mcl he might never play a snap again the eagles need someone to replace him you want to protect carson wentz you're not going to let a very good offensive tackle slip through your hands if jason peters is never going to play a snap again orlando brown to the eagles with the last pick of the first round i, I want to thank you guys for watching this video I hope you enjoyed. I very much enjoyed making this video. It's a lot of fun constructing these mock drafts. And while a lot of these picks aren't going to be accurate, it's really speculative at this point. Anything could happen from now until the draft in late April or May or whenever it is. But again, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And hope you're not too upset with who I had your team taking. And I will see you in the next one. Take it easy.